In the last video we identified the sensitivity calculations using the adjoints as a free stage process. We first solved a classical nonlinear system, then we solved the adjoint linear system and in the last third step we evaluate the sensitivities. In the last video we used implicit differentiation. In this video we want to use the Lagrangian perspective which yields the exactly same result. Hi and welcome to this new video. As said in the intro, we want to look again at the derivations of the adjoints for nonlinear systems. Here we want to do it in a Lagrangian perspective. I want to first start by recapping this free stage process, then we will look at the apparent quantities and then we make a derivation using the Lagrangian perspective. So as said in the intro, our ultimate goal is to evaluate the sensitivities of a scalar valued loss function with respect to some parameters theta. These parameters theta appear in an implicitly given relation in form of a nonlinear system. And in order to obtain these sensitivities efficiently, we can employ the adjoint method, which consists first of, I will call it a classical problem. Classical because it is the original nonlinear problem that we would have solved anyways. Then we have the adjoint problem that we will derive again with the Lagrangian perspective. And then we have the gradient or sensitivity evaluation, which we will also derive using the Lagrangian perspective. And let me emphasize once again, here we have a non-linear system. So we have a vector valued f dependent on some vector valued x and the set of parameters. And we might need a newton raphson solver in order to obtain the solution x. And here, important, we have a linear system, which is way easier to solve. It is our joint problem. And then here, we just have an explicit relation. So let's say this is an explicit relation so you just plug these particular values in and perform the matrix multiplication here. Then once again, real quick, what are the quantities here? So we have f or vector valued f, which is our residuum function, which is defining the nonlinear system. It is an n-dimensional quantity. And then we have x, which is our primary unknown. I will just say it's the unknown. It has the same dimensionality. It is a vector with n components. Then we have theta or the theta vector, which is our parameter set. And let's say it is a p-dimensional vector. So we have p different parameters. Then we have j, our loss value, or maybe let's call it the loss function. And that one is a scalar value that is important here. And then we have lambda vector, which is our a joint variable and this one always has the same shape as our primary unknown so it's also n-dimensional. And why are we doing what we are doing? The reason is that we want to backpropagate through implicit systems or in our case here non-linear systems. So we want to backpropagate or we can also just say we want to do automatic differentiation through non-linear systems. Well, that is still a little bit abstract. Where do you find this? For example, if you discretize non-linear PDEs. So for instance, in discrete non-linear PDEs. And again, where do you find these non-linear PDEs? For instance, in mechanics or fluid dynamics. So let's start and derive it using the Lagrangian perspective. So derive using Lagrangian perspective. In the last video, we just used implicit differentiation, which I think is a little bit simpler to understand for these, but the Lagrangian is equally fine. So what is the idea is that instead of just obtaining the gradients, we actually have an optimization problem. So we want to minimize overall parameter vectors theta, our loss function, j, which depends on the vector x and optionally also some parameters. 
And then we have a constraint. So we say subject two. And here we have our implicit relation. So f of x and theta is the zero vector. So we want to minimize the loss function that can, for instance, be a quadratic loss against the reference solution. And the x is given as a solution to this nonlinear system. And now we have the following steps that we have to do in order to obtain an adjoint problem. So first we build the Lagrangian. What is the Lagrangian? Here we create an augmented loss function. Let's call it L. And this loss function depends on x again and also optionally on theta. And additionally, it depends on a Lagrange multiplier lambda. And by design, I also use lambda here because it will then turn out to be the adjoint variable. And how do we build that? We take our original loss j and then add lambda transpose f. So we kind of do a scalar product between lambda and f in order to incorporate it in here. And then second step, we take the total derivative of this augmented loss function with respect to the theta vector. And here it is important to take the total derivative. So we will be considering all of the nested dependencies. So what we are doing is the total derivative of L with respect to vector theta. And then how does this work? So we first have our J. And if we look at the dependencies of J, J depends explicitly on theta, at least optionally. And it depends on x, which by itself depends on theta, as it is the solution of this nonlinear system. So we have a nested dependency. So in other words, you can say that this is also dependent on theta. So we get first our partial j, partial theta for the explicit dependency. And then we get partial j, partial vector x times total x, total theta. That is because of the implicit dependency. And then let's look at f. So first we keep our lambda transpose and then let's open up a bracket. f is explicitly dependent on theta as well as implicitly through x. So in essence we are getting first our partial f, partial theta and then partial f, partial x times total x total theta and then let's close down the bracket. Let's look at the dimension for the total x total theta. You might also call it the solution sensitivity. We have the following dimensionality. This one is a quantity that will be n by p dimensional and then we have the gradient j with respect to x which in our case here will be a row vector which is one by n dimensional. And we use that concept or that definition of the gradient as a row vector in order to simplify this multivariate chain rule. Because if you now take the matrix multiplication, then the innermost dimension cancel and we get a row vector, which is one by P, which is exactly the shape of the loss sensitivity that we are looking for. So this is one by P dimensional. So to remind you, here, and that's just by convention here, it makes our life a little simpler. The gradient is a row vector. Of course, you can always transpose it, and then you also have it as a column vector. This is also referred to as the numerator layout in matrix calculus. With this, we have the second step done. Let's continue on to the third step which is to isolate the solution sensitivities. And the solution sensitivities are the dx by d theta. So that is a really big Jacobian. So imagine you have a lot of unknowns here, maybe 10,000 and 100,000 parameters. That is quite a large Jacobian. So let's isolate that because it appears in two summons here. So then we get the DL by D theta is, so we first keep our partial J partial theta plus, and then we have a Lambda transpose DF by D theta or partial F partial theta. 
plus, and then opening bracket, we have a dj by dx plus lambda transpose times df by dx, and then closing brackets multiplied with dx by d theta, which is our solution sensitivities. And why did we isolate them? That is because hypothetically, if this bracket here would be zero, then we would never have to calculate the solution sensitivities. And we can freely choose the Lagrange multiplier lambda, so we can make this bracket be zero. So let me note that down. So if that is zero, or more precisely, if it is the zero vector transpose, so the zero row vector, we do not need to calculate dx by d theta, because that would be a really costly quantity, so let's just avoid it. And then we have identified the adjoint problem, which is the fourth point. So identify adjoint problem. And the adjoint problem is that one here. So we can note that down. So we have partial j with respect to x plus lambda transpose times df by dx is equal to the zero vector, or more precisely, the zero vector transpose. And we can rearrange that in order to get a linear system or make it more explicit, which is df by dx in brackets transpose times lambda is equal to minus dj by dx in brackets transpose. And that is the important result here. That's our adjoint system. And it is a linear system of equations for our adjoint variable, which was lambda, and that one is an n-dimensional vector. If the step from here to here was too fast, then check out the other video with the implicit differentiation, because there it is done in more detail. And let me emphasize once again, that is a linear system. Our classical problem is nonlinear, whereas our adjoint problem is linear. If you solve a nonlinear problem with a newton raphson solver, it might take you five, six, seven linear iterations. But here we only need one linear solution. So that should be faster by almost an order of magnitude than the nonlinear system. And then we can solve this adjoint problem and have the fifth step, which is the gradient evaluation. So we do identify gradient evaluation. And for this, let us take a look again at the rearranged system. So if we solve the adjoint system, then that one is zero. So we can ignore everything in the end. And we are left with the partial j, partial theta, plus this expression. And here, our adjoint variable appears once again. So let me note that down. We get the dl by d theta is equal to partial j, partial theta, plus lambda transpose df by d theta. And now you might say, well, that is the sensitivity of the Lagrangian with respect to theta, but originally we were interested in the sensitivity of the j with respect to theta, but these two are identical. So that one is equal to this one. And the simple argument is that this expression here will always be zero, and therefore the two total derivatives are identical. If you want more detail on this, then check out the Lagrangian derivation for the adjoint of a linear system. Let me make that one yellow here, and then we can put a box around it. That is the last step that we do. So let's go back all the way to the top from the intro. So we have first the classical problem, which we would solve anyways. Then we solve the adjoint problem we just derived. And then finally, we have the gradient evaluation, but that one is compared to the other two and almost a no operation. So the computational cost is within step one and two. And with these two steps, we are 
orders of magnitude faster than using, for instance, finite differences or also forward sensitivities, given we have large parameterized systems. That's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the Lagrangian perspective. If you have questions left, then please write a comment. I would be happy to help you. And check out the next video where we will do a Python implementation for a problem from nonlinear mechanics. Until then, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it. Here you will now see similar videos and I hope to see you in the next video.